Praise God. Hallelujah. Merry Christmas. I welcome you in this new episode of Thanksgiving Prayer. My name is Prophetess Gloria Pierre Ecclesias, but my friends call me Natalie. Praise God. Hallelujah. Today we are going to pray, but the prayer that we're going to pray is not like any other prayers, it's Thanksgiving prayer. Now, some of you might ask me, well, this is a season where we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why are we going to give thanks? We have done Thanksgiving recently of the harvest which we have been producing all this year. But why should we give thanks now? It's just to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Well, to answer to this, your question, I will say, 
Yes, we give thanks exactly because the birth of Jesus Christ. This is the fulfillment of the promise of God. Thousand years, hundreds of years before Christ was born, the Lord promised his people salvation. And this season is the season of the accomplishment or the fulfillment of the promise of God. We should normally, when we celebrate this Christmas, we should remember always how God is faithful. He is God who Fulfill his promises. He spoke through Isaiah. Years, hundreds of years. Before Christ was born. About him. Coming to redeem. To take vengeance. To save. To bring justice. For his people. As I had told us, or oh, the Lord spoke to us through Isaiah. We are going to read some, not all of it, because of the time. Some of the scripture where the Lord God spoke through his prophet Isaiah concerning this moment. The first scripture we are going to read is Isaiah chapter 9. Praise God. <coughs> the first scripture is Isaiah chapter 9. We are going to read that quickly before we move on. What did the Lord say? The Father God said, from verse 1, He said, Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. Hallelujah. The land of Jebulun and Nepotali will be humbled, but there will be a time in the future when Galilee of Gentile of the Gentile will lie along the road that ruin between the Jordan and the sea will be filled with glory. Verse two The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Praise him. For those who live in the land of deep darkness, a light will shine. Praise Him. You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, and like a warrior dividing the planter. For you will break the yoke of the sla slavery, and lift up the heavy burden from the sh from the shoulder. You will break the oppressor road, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The the boots the boots of the warrior, and the un uniform, bloodstained by war, will be will will all be burned. There will be fuel for the fire. Why? For a child is born to us, a son is given unto us. The government will rest on his shoulder, and he will call will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace 
will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven armies will make this happen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord God Almighty. Now, this is the promise. God sent this word. And remember Isaiah 55 said that his words are like rain. And wherever he sent this world, his words, it will surely go and accomplish its purpose. This was the word that the Lord spoke for his people. All of us, you and me. Praise God. Now, when this word was then fulfilled, come with me. We are going to go on the New Testament. Praise Him. Praise the living God. God of Israel. God of Jacob. Hallelujah. To Him alone be the glory. Forever and ever. For eternity and eternity. Now, the promise came to be fulfilled. Let's go in um, the book of Mark. Book of Matthew. I'm going on Matthew. Praise God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. God is an amazing God. God is an amazing God. He is an amazing God. Now, let us read in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, from verse 18. And what does the Bible say? This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to, them, to, to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man and did not want his, to disgrace her, her reputation, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he was considering this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, in the dream, said Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and he and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. All of this occur to fulfill the law promise, the Lord message through the through, through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will, they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Praise God. Amen. This uh, is how Jesus was born. Now, let's see what happened. Chapter 2 said, Jesus was born, from verse 1, Jesus was born in the Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern land arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of Jew? We saw his star as he rose, and we have come to worship him. Praise God.
King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, and as was everyone in Jerusalem, he called a meeting and of the leading priests and teachers of the religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? Praise God. Even Herod knew that the Messiah is born. And so, because he didn't want anyone to come and shake him off from his throne, he was terrified of fear. So he asked his uh, board member, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? The Messiah, the Savior. Because the promise was made long time ago, before it, do, it came to be materialized. And to us, a son is born, a child is born. And a son is given to us. Praise God. And why would a son be given unto us? Some might call or answer. I might ask, why would a son be given unto us? Why in the first place? What is happening? Now, this is what happened. As we all know, the world entered in the, under the oppression uh, of the enemy, the demonic power, the rule on the reigning of Lucifer, that destroyed nations. There was havoc, and the Lord saw the cry, or heard the cry, and saw the anguish of his people. That was due to sin. That is the consequences of the sin that was committed in the Garden of Eden early on in the beginning. So the, that consequence is now the people of God were in bondage, oppressed, manipulated, controlled, and sabotaged and destroyed by the enemy. And people were in pain, just like now. Then God made a promise that, no, I love my people and I will extend my saving hand and I will come to rescue you all. He made that promise by starting as us. He made that promise because of his love for you and me. He chose a, a very, very special, a very special man, Abraham, and that's when the whole process began. When God made a decision, now I'm coming to rescue my people. I see what is coming. I see. I can hear the anguish from the future and even now. Now I'm gonna come and rescue my people. He began his plan with a man called Abraham. Abraham was taken from his place, from his native land, and be taken by God to a place where God chose for the people that he was, the chosen nation that he chose to reveal himself through this nation to all the world a large. He chose this man of Abraham and he gave him a covenant. From the seed of Abraham was born the nation of Israel. That today we are Israel by faith, a chosen nation, as we all know the story. So the divine plan of God to rescue his people, to give him a comfortable, to give them a comfortable place, to bring justice began with the man called Abraham. As that covenant that he made with him was forever. And the promise that he made with Abraham that he will give him the seed, he will give him children will be without number. 
like a like a sun in the seashore as the star in the heaven you can't count the number of stars you can't count the sun in the seashore that means god said i'm going to create a new nation that myself i'm going to rescue this new nation will be so great out of numbers and that is what we saw what he says in Isaiah chapter 9 that the government you know the government of his son this unusual king this unusual son that has been given unto us the savior and the messiah his government will be forever and it will be peace and he will never never end he will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor praise god and god said that those who walk in the darkness they will no longer walk in the darkness no more those who were in the deep deep dark deep deep darkness it means that some who have been even to find themselves in the kind of the enemy there is a hope you know that woman or that father or that uncle whosoever is practicing witchcraft or sorcerers or they are in alcohol or cult or illuminati or secret society they are in the deep darkness these people there is a hope there is a hope for that person there is a hope for that assassin there is a hope for that serial killer there is a hope for that thief there is a hope those in the deep there is a hope for those who are deep into an addiction there is a hope who are lost those who are deeply lost there is a hope even though those who have lost their mind they they are under influence of demonic domin, demonic power there is a hope there is a hope for those who are in the deep 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 darkness even those who are collaborating with the devil himself there is a hope that they can be saved hope is in hand there is a hope those who walk in the darkness those who do not know god those who do not they do not know the love of god they do not know how good god is they do not understand why things are going the way they do they they will have the revelation you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free there is a hope there is a hope of salvation there is a hope for peace there is a hope for justice there is a hope for prosperity there is a hope there is hope praise god there is a hope praise him and then at the right time and i love what the bible says here in isaiah 9 he said verse 7 he said the passionate commitment of the lord of heaven's armies will make this happen did you hear that the passion and the commitment god is committed passionately for you and me the passion commitment to the law of the lord of heaven's armies he is a, a commander chief the head of a heavenly host of army of god he is the one who is committed now the king of king the god who holds all the power he is committed passionately to deliver you there is a hope to that son who has gone astray running away from home there is a hope for that husband or that wife who refuse to know the truth there is a hope for that sister that brother that sister who are out 
and, and selling their body, there is a hope. There is a hope for everyone. There is a hope for the nation. The passion commitment of the Lord. Bring it to pass. Because he said so. And he sent forth his word. He promised. He remember his servant Abraham. He had a covenant. He still have his covenant. And he's fulfilling his deal. You know, God has a deal with Abraham, that father of faith. God entered into serious business with him and he's committed. Even though Father Abraham is no longer physically in the world, but God still go ahead and fulfill his promise because he said so. And his passion, commitment, bring into pass. Did you know that? When God, and if God has promised you something, let me tell you that his passion, commitment, will bring it to pass. It does not matter how long that it takes. How long does it, does it take? Hundreds of years. When God promised the Savior, there were a long time. The people who received that promise, they were not there when the Messiah was born. The promise that the Lord made to us, Abraham, Abraham didn't see Jesus in the physical while he was still alive. But God had already promised him a son. And that son was to be laid at the altar for the sacrifice of mankind. And that son was to rise up again and rule forever. And that son will give him many, many, many children. Ah! How fertile Jesus Christ is. So much. So much. Praise God. Praise Him. So, why was the Lord made this promise? Let us go quickly. What did the Lord say here? And Isaiah 49, let us look at Isaiah 49 quickly. We're going to start from verse 8. There's so much, I will recommend you to go and look and read Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. It will tell you a lot about Jesus Christ, about the promises of God. Praise God. Now, Isaiah 49 from verse 8 we are going to read as much as we can. This is what the Lord said. At just the right time, I will respond to you. Praise God. On that day of salvation, I will help you. I will protect you and give you to the people as my covenant with them. Who is he talking to? He's talking to Christ. This is exciting. Through you, I will reestablish the land of Israel and assign it to its own people again. I will say to the, to the prisoner, come out in freedom. And to those in the darkness, come into the light. They will be my sheep grazing in the green pasture and on the hill that were previously bare. They will neither hunger nor thirst. The searing sun will not reach them any more. The Lord, in his mercy, will lead them. He will lay them beside a cool water. And I will make my mountain into level path for them. 
the highways will be raised above the valley. See, my people will return from far away, from land to the north and west, and from as far as the south of Egypt. Praise God. Sing for joy, O heaven. Rejoice, O earth. Burst into song, O mountain. For the Lord has comfort, com comforted his people and will have compassion on them in their suffering. Never can a, a mother forget her nursing child. Can she feed, feel no love for the child she has born? But even if she ha she were pos it was for that is possible, I will not forget you. See, I have written your name in the palm of my hand. Always in my mind is a picture of Jerusalem walls in ruins. Soon your descendants will come back and all who are trying to destroy you will go away. Look around you and see, for all your children will come back to you. As surely as I live, said the Lord, there will be like a jewel and bridal ornament for you to display, even the most desolate part of your abundant land will soon be crowded with people. Praise God. Let's jump to verse 22 and 23. This is what the sovereign law said. See, I will give a signal to the godless nation. They will carry your little son back to you in the arms. They will bring your daughter in the shoulder. Kings and queens will serve you and care for you all your need. They will bow bow to the earth before you and lick the dust of your feet and then you will know that i am the lord those who trust in me will never be put to shame let's jump into verse 25 but the lord said the captive or warrior will be released and the plunder of tyrants will be retrieved for i fight those who fight you and i will serve Save your children. I will feed your enemy with their own flesh. They will be drunk with the river of their own blood. All of the world will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the mighty one of Israel. We can go on and on and on and read. There are so many promises that the Lord promised you and I, the children of faith, the blessed nation, to come and rescue us. And this is the time, is the period when God fulfilled that promise unto us. A child is born and a son is given. The Messiah. God with his people, Emmanuel, the Savior. He said, I will fight against those who fight against you. Jesus Christ came to fulfill the word of God. He is the weapon of God. He is the Savior. He is the one who came to set you and I free. There is a hope at hand. There is a hope. So, this season is a season of thanksgiving. And that's why we are going to pray. A prayer we're going to pray is no longer a prayer of asking God, come and save me. It is no longer a prayer that we will ask for God, come and intervene for me. Because the Savior has come. The promise of the Lord has been fulfilled towards you. So, this is a season where we say, thank you, Jesus. Look back. All these nine and twelve months that has just gone by. How the mighty hand of God has been at work on your behalf. You are here today. Yes, you might have lost one of your friends. 
or loved one, family member. God is the source of life. In all circumstances, we give him thanks. But you are here today. This is a Christmas. You still have a life. Maybe your husband has walked away from you during these nine months. Maybe your wife has walked away from you. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe your business going bankrupt. Maybe you, whatever has you have encountered these past 12 months, but you can see the hands of God with you that day by day, His grace, His love, His mercy endures forever. And He's been with you and never forsake you. So, indeed, His promise has come to be fulfilled. He said, I will fight against those who fight with you. The Holy Spirit is with us. The Spirit of the living God, the truth, and is guiding us. The heavenly host, the angel of the Lord, are surrounding us each and every day. God is at work. He is in serious business with the covenant that he had with he, he has still with his servant Abraham. God is at work. He's working yesterday. He's working today. And he will continue to work tomorrow until the end of time. God is with us. Emmanuel. So we thank him for this precious time. For being with us. Giving us the breath of life. Shelter. Food. Think about every little help you had this past year. Maybe you need a, a cup or drink. And somebody, a stranger, give you that a drink of water. That is a help. That is the hands of God. That is the love of God. Maybe you need the shelter. And the government give you a, a temporary accommodation. That is the love of God. Yes, it's the government, is a politic, but let me tell you, the Bible says this. The heart of a man is in the hands of the Lord God Almighty. And he directed to accomplish the purpose or the destiny of his loved ones. You might see that it's the government that has given you a house. You might see that it's the government that is paying you your education. You might say that it's, it's, it's the government that, uh, that has put the NHS or, or, or treatment for free. But let me tell you, the heart of a man is in the hands of the Lord God Almighty. That he will serve you. He will serve you through his people to accomplish your destiny. You had a major operation to go through. No money to go and pay. And NHS, the doctor, took care of you for free. You, had, you were sick. You went to see your doctor. They gave you a prescription. You went to the chemist and get free medication. In some areas, they have to pay. No free medication, but we have that here. How wonderful God is. Isn't it the time to say, thank you, Lord, and bless those who are in the government. Bless those who are working. Bless those who are paying tax. To cover all these expenses. Bless those who are paying tax. That you are able to go. And go to high education. And it is paid for. Even if it is a loan that you have to pay later. Isn't it? God is good. This is the mighty hands of God. You are living in the house. Which you don't pay a penny. God has given you the accommodation. Yes, you said it's a housing. It's the government who's paying. But God has put that government here to serve you and I. Isn't it the hands of God is good? Is powerful? Shall we not thank them? Your children are going to school free. They are having a free education. Praise God. 
You don't have to pay the school for your daughter or your sons to go to school. Is it good that God is? That is the love of God. Hmm? We have uh, services. We have the police to assume the protection and the, and, and, and the security for the cov- for, for, for in the country. Isn't it good that God is? You might say that this is the government, this, that. But God is, has put these services for you and me. Praise God. You can stay in your home without terrorists come and break into your home. Huh? Some people, some areas in the world, they are fearful. They don't even know where they will see tomorrow. Because the bombs are flowing everywhere, like the rain falling from the sky. But we are here in the United Kingdom. There is no such a thing. We are not saying that everything is perfect here. But let us just highlight what is good. And appreciate and give thanks to God for what he has provided for us. You need money for food. The government is paying. You have a job. You have your business. You have a good people, employees working for you. You have been given that good position. You have been promoted. Let's give thanks. God has given you the ability to, to manage, to raise, to establish that, that business, that ministry, that station. And whatever activity you are doing and you are prospering in it. Blessing. Be a blessing to others. You help your family. Those who are far from their family. You, you, you work and you send your family money. You, you pay presents. You give this. You give. That is God is working through you. Should we say thank you for using me to be a blessing to those who are in need? Every month you pay tax and your tax is contributing for the security of this country. Your tax, your, ha- your wo- hard work is contributing to those who are homeless, to those who have no food, to clothe those who are naked. The money that they are paying these people every week benefit. You are clothing these people. They will go to Pride Market and shop and buy some clothes based, based upon the sweat of, you, of, of, of your forehead. You pay tax. Rejoice that God is using you to be a blessing. Rejoice that God has placed the people to work and give them the strength, the ability to get up every morning and get the things functioning. We have a radio which I'm broadcasting now. Blessed be the name of the Lord that he has given the ability to these genius people who have created the, 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 and provide the software and the, 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 this system where we can broadcast, we can pray, we can gather together. We, uh, you can see somebody from afar where we can communicate. You can call your family. You can speak to them. You, we now have a video on our phones. This is the services that God is putting in place just for you. Praise God. He said, I will give you peace. I will fight against those who fight against you. Diseases God fight against it. He gives you good health. There is a healing. There is a hope for healing. Even though those who are in deeper of hopelessness, sickness or diseases, there is a hope for cure. Not only from the, from, from, from the physician and the hospital, but there is also hope at hand that prayer, through prayer, through the servants of God, women and children and men, God can extend his grace and his love, his virtue to heal your body. There is a healing power available for what men cannot do, God will do. 
God can provide for you. Somebody gave you a thousand pound. Somebody gave you five pounds. Somebody gave you one pound, 50p, or bought some food for you. That is the hands of God providing for you. Somebody has given you a present this, this morning, yesterday, Christmas, or any or birthday, or whatever present. God, that is the love of God for you. The love that you received from your husband and the care. That is the love of God for you. The love you are receiving from your wife and your children and the care. That is the love of God for you. Isn't it God is good? God is wonderful. Indeed, He fulfills His promises. So, this is a season where we say thank you. Thank you for what you have done. And thank you for what you are going to do for new a new year ahead. I thank you for every day. I thank you for your saving hand. I thank you for being there for me. I thank you for giving me justice. Thank you for setting me free from the prison. Thank you for the deliverance. Thank you for loving me through that person. Thank you for giving me through that person. Thank you for healing me through that system, through this government. Thank you for opening the doors for me. Thank you for providing for me and my family. And thank you for making me a blessing to us others. For that is your love towards your people. Let us pray. The prayer we are going to pray is in the book of Psalm. Let us go. Psalm 36. A prayer of thanksgiving. And when we finish the with from this broadcast, I will suggest and I advise you to continue. Do nothing else. As I am compelled by the Holy Spirit to tell you that do nothing else to ask but just thank God this season. Throughout the end of the year and the beginning of the new year. Praise God. Let us pray. Some 136 from verse 1 to verse 26 praise God let us pray if you have your Bible please open up and pray this prayer with me if you don't have your Bible please listen to this word and agree with me in prayer praise God we give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endure forever. We give thanks to the God of gods. His faithful love endure forever. We give thanks to the Lord of lords. His faithful love endure forever. We give thanks to him who alone does mighty miracles. His faithful love endure forever. We give thanks to him who made the heavens so skillfully. His faithful love endure forever. We give thanks to him who placed the earth among the waters. His faithful love endure forever. We give thanks to him who made the heavenly light. His faithful love endure forever. The sun to rule the day. His faithful love endure forever. And the moon and the star to rule at night. His faithful love endure forever. We give thanks to him who killed the firstborn of his Egypt. His faithful love endure forever. <clears throat> we, he brought Israel out of Egypt. His faithful love endure forever. He acted with a strong arm and powerful arm. His faithful love endure forever. We give thanks to him who parted the Red Sea. His faithful love endure forever. He led Israel safely through. His faithful love endures forever. But he humbled Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. 
His faithful love endure forever. We give thanks to him who laid his people through the wilderness. His faithful love endures forever. We give thanks to him who struck down mighty king. His faithful love endures forever. He kills the powerful kings. His faithful love endures forever. Sihon, kings of Amorites, his faithful love endures forever. An oak king of Bashan, his faithful love endures forever. God gave the land to these kings, the land of these kings, as an heritage. His faithful love endures forever. As a special position to his servant Israel, his faithful love endures forever. He remember us in our weakness. His faithful love endures forever. He save us from our enemies. His faithful love endures forever. He give food to every living thing. His faithful love endures forever. We give thanks to God of heaven. His faithful love endures forever. Praise God. Lord, we give you thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your mighty hands at work. Thank you for multitude and countless miracles you, pro pro you, 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 you manifest in our life this last year. Thank you for the miracle hands that you have prepared for us, that you are with us on this coming new year. Thank you for the open doors. Thank you for the justice ahead. Thank you for providing for our needs. Thank you for saving us for, from death. Thank you for saving us from the depths. Thank you for saving us from danger. Thank you for saving us from falling into the temptation of the enemy. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for the security. Thank you for providing for all our needs. Thank you for, for, for loving us through other people. Thank you for using us to love other people. Thank you for using us to be a blessing to us others. Thank you, oh God, thank you. Lord, we thank you, we bless you, we give you the glory. Hallelujah, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came and died on the cross for us and saved us. And open the windows of heaven to pour down mighty blessings, overflow of blessings in our lives. Thank you for giving us life more abundantly. Hallelujah. To you be the glory forever and ever and ever. In Jesus Christ's name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Beloved children and servants of God, give thanks throughout this season. Ask of nothing because you have it. Believe you have it. Everything you ever need, life more abundantly is in your hands. There is a hope at hand. There is a rescue in operation. The hero is operating in every sense, in every part of your life. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. The guarantee of the promise of God, the Holy Spirit, is with us. And the army of the Almighty God is accompanying us every day. Lay down the mountain of your ways, bringing the valley into level ground, knocking down all the barriers and all the stones that the enemy has laid before you. Removing them away, opening the Red Sea and turning the desert into a fertile ground. Turning what was death to life. Turning emptiness to an abundance. Turning sicknesses into healing. Turning sadness into joy. 
This is yours. Praise God. Amen. Go in peace and celebrate. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye for now. Praise God.